You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Webb, and I'm here with Dr. David Klingler for our Teach Me the Bible podcast. And we have just a tremendous desire, David, helping the people of God understand the Word of God. I want to encourage everyone, if they haven't downloaded our app, to do so. They can do that uh, as well through Apple TV or Roku app. And again, uh, I know people are going to get tired of hearing this maybe, but I I love it that they can interact with uh, you on questions, uh, there's study guides for continued growth, other resources, articles, blog posts uh, that they are free to engage in. And so building those relationships, it's amazing. Just a, a side note here as well, uh, even though this is going out uh, through social media and other things, uh, it's really uh, a great blessing to be able to build some sense of relationship with people through their interaction through this podcast. So very thankful for that. And uh, literally people in other parts of the world engaging. And uh, I've had a question, uh, I think I've shared this with you, a pastor in Brazil who who asked, hey, I know you all haven't gotten there on the translation yet, but do you mind if I share this in Portuguese? And I'm like, absolutely, get after it. So a lot is happening. And so I really appreciate people interacting with you uh, through the podcast. So uh, but today, we're going to go into chapter one. We've done the overview of yep. Second uh, Peter, and it's a tremendous argument and what he is encouraging, really, exhortation to people to know the Word, uh, to combat those false uh, teachers in the church. So um, how's he starting us off in chapter one? Yeah. What, what's uh, second, second Peter. Um, years ago, when I was in seminary, and one of my uh, professors was Dr. Charlie Bayless. Uh, and he showed me and showed us in the class uh, the pronouns. Be, mm-hmm. Pay attention to the pronouns mm-hmm. that Peter is using. And there was just a couple passages where he did this. And and over the, the next 20 years, uh, as we started to look at how these, how the, these apostles are using these pronouns, we realized they're being very specific. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of where, if you've been with us in any of our other books, you know, in Ephesians or Galatians, or I'm always emphasizing the pronouns. It really started with with this letter, okay. um, and and you begin to think, what if? This sounds so ridiculous now, but what if when the author says we, and an author says you, he's not referring to the same people? What if there's a we group and a you group? Mm-hmm. And what if the we group isn't the you group? I mean, <laughs> and and in every language, you know, you know, when you go through seminary and you do mm-hmm. Old Testament studies, you learn a bunch of different languages. And uh, and in every language, we means we and you means you. you. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean you means we, right? Uh, and so there's uh, several distinct mm-hmm. groups here that that Peter is referring to. And if we keep those consistent throughout the whole letter. Mm-hmm. Um, it all makes perfect sense. What happens is we, we want to go in there and take the verses we like that include we and reject the verses we don't like. Or, the, you know, here's a perfect example. We've said this before. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And this is what Paul says to the Philippians. Um, but when I point out to our seminary students, notice what he didn't say. Uh, Paul was writing to the Philippians. He could have said, y'all can do all things through Christ who strengthens y'all. But he doesn't say that. Mm-hmm. Um, he could have said it, and he doesn't. Well, then what is he saying? Mm-hmm. Why is he? Why does he not say we all can do all things through Christ? He doesn't say that either. Mm-hmm. So, what is it about that context of that statement that that um, uh, that we need to go back and visit? And uh, and so, uh, the long story short is that pronouns mean things, and it starts right from the beginning. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours, there's the it's you know first so, one so the, right the, to, the mm-hmm. those who that's going to be the you group, mm-hmm. and there's an ours group, and of course it it begs the question who's the y'all and who's the us you know who's the those and who are the ours mm-hmm. uh, by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, 
grace and peace be multiplied to y'all in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, in verse 2, that word that they're translating knowledge actually is the exact same word, epignosis. It's Mm -hmm. the exact same word that they're going to translate as true knowledge in verse 3, right? So I don't know why they don't translate it consistently, Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, There's gnosis, there's knowledge, and then there's true knowledge, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And who has knowledge and who has true knowledge? And uh, and so the, the apostle, we're going to find, has the true knowledge of him. He says in verse 3, uh, and so verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied to y'all in the true knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him. So uh, because the disciples, the apostles, have the true knowledge of him, and I'm going to show you how we get to apostles here in a minute. And he's not even mm-hmm. talking about all the apostles. Mm-hmm. He's actually just talking about Peter, James, and John, mm-hmm. right? Um, have the true knowledge of him. Uh, his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness because we have the true knowledge of mm-hmm. him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these, he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them, y'all might become partakers. Mm-hmm. And this really sits in the spot of the whole apostolic role Mm -hmm. uh, that Christ gave his words to the apostles, and the apostles are to take those words out. Um, The apostle has the true knowledge of him. Mm -hmm. And if we want to have true knowledge of him, we have to go to the apostles' words because we can't go talk to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Uh, We haven't seen him. We haven't heard him. This is what John's going to say in John's both his uh, gospel and in his letter. Uh, Let's skip down a little bit. Let's skip down to verse uh, 15. He picks, he continues. And I will be diligent that any time after my departure that y'all may be able to call these things to mind. For we did not follow cleverly devised tales uh, when we made known to y'all the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's that's Mm -hmm. the... That's the... uh, um, uh, Mount of uh, Transfiguration, Peter, James, and John are with him. They heard the voice from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I will peace. And so we heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Mm-hmm. And so we have the prophetic word made more sure, which y'all would do well to pay attention to, right? The prophetic word. All of the Old Testament was talking about this one who was coming, the Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you ask the Jew, well, do you believe that the Christ is coming? You say, of course. Um, is that adequate now? No. John's going to say, absolutely not. Uh, in First John, uh, the Jews thought that Christ was coming, mm-hmm. but they rejected wholeheartedly that the Christ had come, right. uh, that the Christ had come in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the eyewitness account, we have the prophetic word made more sure. We saw, we were with him. We heard those words uh, that were... Uh, were given on the Mount of uh, Transfiguration. Uh, and so you would be well to do well to pay attention to these things because we have the true knowledge of him. Uh, and so we did not follow cleverly devised tales. Look out for these cleverly devised tales because that's going to be mm-hmm. the, everything that he's saying is is going to either be in his camp or in the false teacher's camp. We're not like the false teachers who follow cleverly devised tales. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, when we made known to you the power and coming, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Uh, and so the eyewitness account is going to be very, very important. Mm-hmm. And so so the apostles, Peter, James, and John, and Peter saying, we were with him on the holy mountain. We have the prophetic word made mm-hmm. more sure. We have the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence, back to verse 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, For by these he's granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, or in order that by them y'all might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world by lust. And so how do you escape the, wor- the, the corruption that's in this uh, world by lust? Uh, you have to become partakers of the, uh, of the words of the, of the divine nature. How do you do that? Through the words of the, the apostles. Mm-hmm. That any time after my departure, you may be able to call to your remembrance the words of the prophets mm-hmm. and the words of the Lord spoken to you by your apostles, chapter 3, verses mm-hmm. 1 and 2. So, 
So he continues, verse 5, now for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith and in your uh, faith moral excellence and in your uh, moral excellence knowledge, and that's, that's you know, not epignosis, but knowledge, mm-hmm. and then your mm-hmm. knowledge, self-control, and self-control perseverance, or maybe endurance. It's a word that okay. both he and Paul and James, uh, all three of them use. Mm-hmm. And in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are, your, uh, are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful. So, there, there's going to be useless and fruitless mm-hmm. and the useful and fruitful. Mm-hmm. The useful and fruitful uh, have the true knowledge of the Lord, which only comes through the eyewitness account, the words of the apostles, the words of the prophets. The one that is fruitless and useless has no knowledge. Mm-hmm. They're unstable. Uh, they're they're um, you know, untaught and unstable. Uh, he who lacks these qualities is blind and short-sighted. So uh, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord and uh, Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is short, uh, blind and short-sighted, having forgotten his purification of his former sins, right? Mm-hmm. So you have this one who's saved, who's a believer, mm-hmm. but forgets, who's untaught and unstable, who has, has knowledge but has not gone down the trail of the apostolic doctrine to true knowledge, mm-hmm. Uh, and so he becomes blind and short-sighted. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you do these things, you will never stumble. Uh, he's going to end the book with uh, with this uh, stumbling. Therefore, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, be on guard. Mm-hmm. Lest being carried away by the error of unprincipled men, you fall, you stumble from your own mm-hmm. steadfastness, mm-hmm. right? right. Uh, and so uh, if you don't want to uh, to stumble in your faith. Now, mm-hmm. does stumble in your faith mean you lose your salvation? No. Um, well, how do we know that? Well, his whole illustration is going to, to, to make this point with, mm-hmm. uh, with Lot in chapter 2. Mm-hmm. And so next week we're going to be talking about Lot. So, okay. so keep the, the, this... The letter going uh, and keep the illustrations going. We've got a couple of students that are uh, trying to get right dissertations uh, that that the illustrations that the author uses in the letter. Here's a perfect example of the illustration of Lot makes the point of the letter, mm-hmm. right? So when James uses the illustration of Job, it makes the point of the letter of Job. Mm-hmm. When Elijah, when James uses the illustration of Elijah, it makes the point that James is making, mm-hmm. and so it is here also. Uh, with uh, with the uh, illustration of Lot, the the Lot illustration makes the point that uh, that James is uh, uh, or that John uh, that Peter's making here that uh, that Lot was led astray. He went down to Sodom and Gomorrah, and it turns out he acted just like him. Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't mean he wasn't saved, uh, but uh, there were several implications and ramifications of his going down to Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, number one, the truth was maligned, and mm-hmm. and Peter's going to talk about that. Um, you know, Lot's going to preach to his uh, the message of deliverance to his sons-in-law. They won't even listen to him. Right. You know, so um, the truth is maligned. Uh, his actions are, you know, questionable at best. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he is delivered, right? Mm-hmm. And so, all that to say, um, you know, Peter's not saying that the believer loses his salvation by going the way of the false teacher. What he is saying is that where the believer will end up, his last state will be worse than his first. Mm. He started with knowledge. Mm-hmm. He ends up blind and short-sighted, forgetting, uh, you know, uh, forgetting the uh, uh, the purification of his former sins. Uh, and so, uh, so remain steadfast to the apostolic mm-hmm. doctrine, for in this way your entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be abundantly supplied to you. Therefore, I shall always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know and have been established in the truth, which is present within you. See, because the problem is, even if you know and have been established, you can be led astray by false teachers. Mm-hmm. For I consider it right, as long as I'm in this earthly dwelling, to stir you up by way of reminder, knowing that the laying aside of my earthly dwelling is imminent, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will always be diligent at any time after my departure that you may be able to call these things to mind. 
for we did not follow cleverly devised mm -hmm. tales. And that's what we read mm -hmm. earlier. We did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Mm -hmm. uh, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word made more sure, which you would do well to pay attention to, like a lamp shining in a dark place. Uh, this summons the, all the Isaiah language, mm -hmm. uh, a light, uh, you know, the light of the, of the Gentiles, the light of Galilee, and, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, will shine in darkness. Uh, uh, reminds me of John's gospel. Uh, the light shined in yeah. the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it like a light uh, a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star, star arises in your hearts. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is uh, of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Now, who are these men who are moved by the Holy Spirit that spoke from God? Well, it's going to be two groups in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. uh, the prophets of old, Mm -hmm. uh, and the apostles, right? right? And so, uh, this this um, the words of the of the prophet are not open for interpretation. You know, well, uh, the, the false teacher can't come along and say, well, you know, that's just the prophets and the apostles. But here's my view, right? Right. The, the Lord told me. The Lord said to me. <laughs> the Lord spoke to me. Yeah. And we, um, uh, well, I hold that. You know, and I always tell our seminary students and remind myself, uh, you don't get to stand there in front of the Lord and explain things to him. Now, mm -hmm. Lord, let me explain to you how this goes, see, right? You know, or the Lord doesn't say, well, all right, Klingler, what's your interpretation? Yeah. And you say, well, let me, let me explain it to you, Lord, right? You know, uh, see, what, what, when Paul says this, and, you know, the problem is Paul's standing over there, and he's saying, I didn't say I'd that. Say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't say that. <laughs> that's <You know>. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I understood you yeah. to say. Well, it doesn't matter what you understood right, him to say, right? right? Yeah. Because no matter of prophecy is, a, is is an issue of one's own interpretation. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter what your interpretation is. I tell right. students this all the time. I don't care what your interpretation is, and you shouldn't care what my interpretation is. Right. We better get this right. We right. better understand what the words of the apostles and prophets mean. And so, so that's our goal. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you will be led astray. Right. Uh, the, the 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 enemy is deceptive. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you will find people that agree with you. Think about how we choose churches today. Oh, right? you, definitely. Um, you know, you go there and you say, "Well, is this a fit? they have a yeah. Is this a fit? That's right. Do, <laughs> do, do I like their music? Yeah. Do, does their does their music sound good to my ears? Right. Right. Uh, do I like the preacher? Does what the preacher is what the preacher is saying agree with what I already believe? Mm -hmm. Um. Of course, that begs the question, well, then, if you already believe it and you already understand it, well, you need the preacher to well, preach, yeah. right? Think about how we elect pastors in some of our mm -hmm. denominational, mm -hmm. you know, what the, who the people for. who are supposed to be being taught but don't know anything elect the pastor. Mm -hmm. I was um, coaching fourth grade football. Uh, to a bunch of kids who never played football before. Um, how would they elect their coach? You have, you know, two guys. One of them says, okay, now here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to teach you to run and tackle and block and catch, and it's going to take discipline and hard work, and you're going to be in your perseverance, and you're going to be in, in your helmet and shoulder yeah. pads, and you're going to hit, and you have headaches, gonna and it's going to be painful. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to work, and we're going to keep working, and we're going to get good at this game. We're going right? to win, and we're going. And the other guys where they're going, oh, I think we ought to, you know, have fruit pops and donuts, <laughs> and and take breaks all the yeah. time, and Popsicles. and make it fun. <laughs> You know, ice cream. Yeah. Well, who are they? Yeah, ice cream. Yeah. Who are they going to choose? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, ice cream wins every time. <laughs> yeah, coach ice cream wins. Yeah, that's right. The problem is you get out there on Sunday and it's like 98 to nothing and you're getting killed. Yeah. But at least you have popsicles. That's right. You know? Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, the other team's over there doing up downs at, at halftime because, you know, mm -hmm. which if we left, if we left our own devices, we'd always choose wrong. We'd yes. always choose the easy way. We, would. we mm -hmm. always choose what mm -hmm. we, we, we like to hear what we like to hear. We don't, it, yeah. it's not fun to be told you're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, 
but but so we have to ask do the words of the pastor align with the words of the text but someone's got to teach you the words of the text and mm-hmm. and unfortunately because of our protestant situation that we're now in anybody who is self-willed and this is what we're going to get mm-hmm. into uh next week in chapter 2 daring and self-willed reviling authority um you know can pitch a fit leave the church mm-hmm. protest start their own church mm-hmm. Uh, declare themselves to be pastor and collect people who want to hear what he wants to say. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we've seen that happen. It's really mm-hmm. hard mm-hmm. in today's, you know, church landscape yeah. to to find the truth. It's the reason I went to seminary, and yeah. and because I'm so passionate about. I wish I would have been taught this in church. I wish mm-hmm. I would have been taught this some sometime along the way. Um, and and you watch people walk into the seminary. Time after time, right. you say, "Why are you here?" Because I want to learn the Bible. I'm thinking, "Well, why aren't you learning this at church?" And I, I remember distinctly saying that one day in class, and the thought came into my brain: <laughs> "Why aren't you listening to yourself, so, you idiot? You're, you're not teaching this at church. Yeah. You're teaching at the seminary, you're not teaching right. at church." I went home that night, sent out an email, and said, "Look, I'm, I'll start teaching this at church," and uh, and that's really what we're doing here. You, mm-hmm. you know, unfortunately. Right. Um, often you can't learn the Bible at church. And so, but, mm-hmm. but our people, these are the words of life. And, mm-hmm. and if we don't know these words, yeah. then we're going to be led astray. We're going to be unstable, untaught. It will end mm-hmm. with us being blind and short-sighted, short-sighted. and mm-hmm. forgetting uh, the purification mm-hmm. of our former sins. Right. Uh, it'll leave us unstable and we will fall from our own steadfastness. Yeah. And so yeah. the only solution is what Paul uh, Peter's saying here in, uh, in chapter 3, uh, that any time after my departure, you may be able to, uh, uh, to call to your mind the words of the holy mm-hmm. prophets and the commandment of the Lord spoken to you by the mm-hmm. apostles. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the words of life. Yeah, I, I, I said this before and earlier uh, about pastors needing courage to do mm-hmm. this. Also, just wanted to just, and, and you address this, but over and over and over again, just the argument yes. of, the, of the book, yes. of the letter, and connecting it through, for me, is a continual practice. It's a continual, I have to revisit multiple times. So uh, in this, and just trying to encourage other pastors and teachers and just students of the word, d- don't don't get frustrated with having to go back and revisit. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. the more we yeah. over and over, and I think you've said it's one of the reasons why you have disciplined yourself to teach every book of the Bible. Absolutely. And because we go back and revisit and plow through it. Yep. Because what I found, and, and you you warned me about this early on, uh, there are going to be different verses that you thought you had nailed down. But then when you revisit, you go, well, now wait a minute. Yeah. Perfect uh, example. So, yeah. Perfect mm-hmm. example here is one. Uh, uh, he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. Mm-hmm. I hear that all the time. It's mm-hmm. a verse that's quoted all the time. It ain't you. Right. He, he granted to you chicken. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, he's granted to his disciples, his <laughs> yes. apostles, right. uh, uh, the precious and magnificent uh-huh. promises in order that by them, you, the reader, mm-hmm. we might become partakers. Right. Right. right? And, and so right. the only way we do that is through the words of the apostles mm-hmm. and prophets. And and so yeah. it's so... Uh, uh, you know, it's so disconcerting when we don't learn the words of the mm-hmm. apostles and prophets and then think that somehow mm-hmm. we can stand on solid ground. We're going yeah. to be unsta- unstable and untold. It might be better for uh, chapter 2 to address this, but as we move through this, uh, one of the things that might be helpful too is how how you have found it best to, I don't want to say debunk or help people tear down mm-hmm. wrong teaching. Yeah. I don't want to say false teaching. Sometimes it's just people just don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So how you approach, it might be helpful as we're walking through this, just yeah. tidbits or after we're finished. Yep. How do you address those who are in, in error mm-hmm. and they're really, they do love the Lord? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No question. But they're in error. And so yeah. as you walk people through this and, and part of it may be just while we're doing what we're doing, yeah. verse by verse yeah. walking through it. but. To help them see, we'll do. Yeah, let, let me that do might. a quick. Uh, we'll run a little long here, but just a quick story of of how I came to realize for myself. Mm-hmm. I remember I was in a class. I've told this story many times. Uh, I went up to Charlie Bayless and said, "Doc, I don't think that's what that verse means." And he he asked me, "Well, what do you think it means?" And I told him, 
And then his response was, how does what you're saying fit with the verses before that verse and the verses after that verse? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and read it and I was just standing there and I said, not well. (laughs) (laughs) To which he responded, don't you think it ought to? Yeah, yeah. So there's your first lesson. (laughs) And and I said, well, yeah. yeah. So Mm -hmm. in other words, we hold this Mm -hmm. verse in isolation, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But but when we go back and we revisit and say, well, is that what, does that Mm -hmm. understanding fit with the verses before and the verses after? And if it doesn't, you don't have it. Right. We're not saying you have the wrong theology. We're just saying that's not what that That verse is saying saying, to that reader. And and so... And so we're trying to go through, be very careful with our readings mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and our, you know, just be saying, for example, pronouns. You know, pronouns yeah, matter. Right. They do. Uh, words matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, consistent translation matters. Uh, and then let's translate it correctly. And then let's figure out what it means, yeah. right? Let's yeah. not impose our personal brand of theology or application right. or desires on the text. Because uh, as we said previously, you don't get to stand before the Lord and explain it. Right. Uh, y- you're going to be held accountable to what the apostles and prophets meant, not what your interpretation is. And that's very important to yeah. remember. Yeah. Well, David, I'm excited about it, as always. Just just continue to, to revisit and walk through it. So thank you for today. It's a great start. Looking forward to Chapter 2. And I want to encourage everyone, engage in our podcast, ask questions, Continue to to show up, gather together, be the church, and I'm really excited about this next year. Just not to, well, I'm just excited in our own journey about Absolutely. reminding people what it is to be the church. This is only possible through knowing the word. So, thank you for today. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.